Well, hello folks, I'm back. And today we're gonna to be comparing three different guitars. These guitars, in my opinion, could hardly be more different from each other. And that's on purpose because I want to let you hear guitars that do sound quite different. And maybe that'll help you in your selection process. When I look at videos and listen to videos where people compare guitars that are quite similar and it's difficult for me to even hear a difference in the sound, that doesn't really help me much in the selection process. So I'm hoping this, uh, the very disparate sounds here will help you to uh, hear some difference. Uh, we're going to be looking at three guitars. Um, here I have a Waterloo, which is made by Collings Guitars in Austin, Texas. It has a, a spruce top and then the back and sides of this guitar are maple. So one piece maple. And maple is kind of, you know, traditionally thought as a tone wood uh, to be quite focused with fewer overtones and maybe a, a drier sound. To me, there's much more uh, a brightness to the, to the tone of a maple back and side guitar. So hope you'll probably hear, be able to hear that, discern that in our comparison. The second guitar is this OM3 made by Collings Guitars, once again in Austin, Texas, the same company. This has a spruce top, and then the back and sides of this are Brazilian rosewood. So rosewood as a tone uh, wood is, I would think is more characterized by lots of overtones more bass response, uh, kind of a warmer sound, uh, more, more bass response in, than some of the other woods. So hopefully you'll hear that in our demonstration as well. Now the, the Collings that is a um, 14 fret guitar, so the, the 14th fret joins here at the body. The, uh, the Waterloo that I just showed you is actually a 12 fret guitar, so it has 12 frets where it meets the body. Lastly, we're going to be looking at a much more affordable guitar, no doubt, made by Orangewood. This is their parlor guitar. So it'll be interesting to hear the difference between this parlor guitar and the Waterloo, which is considered a parlor body as well. This has a one-piece spruce top at the back and sides of this guitar are laminated mahogany. So laminated wood, to me, uh, it adds a lot more heft to the guitar. This I can feel is quite a bit heavier than my Waterloo. And uh, probably some stiffness, so you won't get as much volume out of the guitar, and it, it certainly will change. Uh, it does, the wood doesn't respond and doesn't vibrate quite like a one-piece back and side. So you, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play just some acoustic selections from various songs a few of them and, and we'll just mix the guitars together and see how they sound. Now as far as recording this, I, I certainly want to get it in high fidelity and I don't want to use just one mic because placement of one mic does seem to color the sound a lot. It will vary quite a bit as you move that one microphone around. So what we're recording here with today is we're doing a very uh, much a stereo configuration. So I have an SE uh, VR2 uh, ribbon microphone here. It's the powered ribbon microphone of theirs. And so I've got this on the right side of me. On the left side I have a blue cactus, which is a large diaphragm condenser di uh, microphone, uh, high quality. And up above, pointing down at the guitar at the 12th fret, is a Neumann KM184. So we have three quality microphones. I'll kind of mix those in a stereo field. So it has a nice stereo image of the guitar. I have these running into a Focusrite preamp and then into a Lynx Aurora DA converter. So a pretty high quality uh, audio chain here. So let's get to it and let's see what these guitars sound like. <laughs> Thank you. 
So there you go. There's a comparison. Do you have a favorite? I'd love to see it in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching and we'll be back soon. Bye.